Hello, everyone. It's, nine, uh, it's one o'clock, and I guess I can start. This is my first uh, participation in J Prime as a presenter. So I'm really very, very excited. And to chew myself, I will start with a short story. So my story begins here on this uh, field. And on this field, there are some people that uh, grow food. And my story ends right here on a table where this food is uh, being served. What we are currently trying to do is to give some IT support for the people that uh, are moving the food from the field to the table. Who are we? Uh, Reve Digital, of course, again. Who am I? Uh, my name is Wachezar Balev. Wachezar, Wacho, as you like it. Uh, what about me? Just an average guy, average age, nothing special. Uh, except maybe that uh, I want to share with you some uh, technical insight about our monitoring solution, which we adopted and implemented using the tools Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. What I didn't show you yet uh, in my story is a third slide. Here it is. It should be located in the middle between the first and the second slide. What you see here on the screen is a warehouse, a food warehouse. It's located, I believe, in a small country somewhere around the world, so there are much bigger uh, warehouses in much bigger countries, I guess. The first time when I entered uh, this place, I thought that uh, it looks much like uh, the room of a teenager. Uh, but there is one crucial difference here, and the difference is that every item that you see here on the screen has its own place. Uh, its destination, its time to leave uh, uh, the warehouse uh, on its route to the shop. Uh, so to keep everything up and running smoothly, uh, the guys that are working there need a lot of software, and our job is to deliver them with some apps. This, it is very important that these apps are robust and they never misbehave. That's why we constantly want to keep an eye on them. And for this reason, we adopted a monitoring solution. To get a feeling how it uh, looks and feels, uh, here is one photo uh, of our installations that we built together with my colleagues. So we have uh, here a TV, uh, a TV set, and it is attached to a metal frame. Uh, the frame is on wheels. And uh, the input source of data for this uh, TV is a small Intel NUC computer. On this computer, some lightweight uh, Linux version works, and we have a browser and uh, Wi-Fi access. So in few words, this is a browser, a huge browser on wheels that we move in our team rooms. And every team is equipped with something like that. What we see on the screen is uh, real or almost real-time monitoring in the cloud. We use uh, Google Cloud. Uh, we can see here various metrics. Some of these metrics are custom. Some have uh, come out of the box from the libraries that we are using. Uh, we can also define custom alerts when some of the metrics here doesn't fit our expectation or the application misbehaves or there are new errors in the logs. We can get notifications. Currently, this is integrated with our HipChat messengers. And uh, this can be installed uh, on our computers, but also on a mobile device, so that we can always get notification if something is wrong, even if we don't see this uh, monitor. We have built that, uh, all these things with a visually appealing, in my uh, opinion, UI. A dashboard that fits the needs of every team, so every team has a different dashboard. And we are able to organize these dashboards into playlists and rotate them from time to time. We also export uh, some business metrics, which is of interest uh, to the business people uh, that we are working with. Uh, so the next step is that I want to uh, show you the big picture, or I want to describe all the components which are involved in this setup. So here is the, the so-called big picture. Some software components that are running in the Google Cloud. Uh, it's rainy there sometimes, but that's another story. Uh, what you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, denoted with S1, S2, S3, and S4, are our uh, microservices. Of course, this setup is not valid only for microservices, but we are heavily using microservices. Some of our uh, these are microservices are implemented in, with Spring Boot, usually. 
and we are uploading, the, uploading them in a Kubernetes cluster. Some of the services are scaled to many instances, some of them run only in single instance. The guy in the middle is the Prometheus server, so this is the most important uh, piece for my talk. Uh, it uh, uses some discovery mechanism, like Kubernetes discovery, Konzoo, and uh, Eureka, and so on, so that uh, it can find all instances of our services. It uh, gives them some kind of, um, offending term, jobs. So our services uh, are generally not, uh, are very different. They do different uh, things. They are not interconnected uh, or they are loosely coupled uh, via Kafka. But they have one thing in common. And the thing is that they expose an HTTP REST and, uh, an HTTP endpoint. And on this endpoint, they are able to deliver a text file in which some metric is contained. So uh, once the Prometheus server discovered all ser service instances, uh, it uh, starts to collect these metrics, to pull these metrics from, uh, from them periodically. At intervals, uh, maybe in our setup, these are 15 seconds. Once the metric data is retrieved, it's stored locally in a Prometheus-specific uh, storage. And then Prometheus is able to expose them to the outside world uh, via the, and by defining a query language, which is called uh, Prometheus query language, or PromQL. Imagine that this is something like, uh, like SQL, but it's very weird for guys that are used to write SQL. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, there are two more tools, which uh, I will mention. One of them is Grafana. Grafana is able to use the HTTP uh, REST API of the Prometheus server, and it sends uh, PromQL requests to Prometheus. Then it collects back the data and visualizes it uh, in a very fancy way with different widgets. But Grafana is not only limited to Prometheus. Grafana can handle other data sources, like uh, Elasticsearch, for example, like InfluxDB, uh, MySQL, if you like it, and so on. So Grafana is a totally separate tool that we use together with Prometheus. Uh, we have another component here. This is the Alert Manager. Alert Manager is more tightly integrated with Prometheus Server. The workflow is the following. Uh, by using PromQL uh, language, you are defining cer certain alert uh, rules in Prometheus. And when these PromQL queries evaluate to certain value, an alert is pushed to alert manager. For example, when there are new errors in the error log, then alert will be pushed to alert manager. Alert manager, later on, will route the alerts to different medias, like heap chart, email, Victor Ops, Pager Duty, also Custom Webhook, whatever you like. But Alert Manager is not uh, that stupid too. It has uh, more features, more interesting features. I'll give you an example with the alert inhibition. But what does it mean? Uh, imagine that we have created one service, one very simp simple service, which has an HTTP uh, endpoint on which you can post some data, and this data is stored in a database. So we can define two alerts here. Uh, the first one is when the database is down, we will get an alert. And the second one is uh, when we have an error code 500 in our REST API, returned by our REST API. But in the case that uh, the data is, database is down, we are generally not interested in other kind of alerts because we have a good feeling that nothing will work as expected. That's why the database, we can configure an alert manager so that uh, in a way that uh, the database is down alert, silences uh, all other alerts that may come. So these are all components. And now uh, I guess we can uh, dive a little bit deeper in Prometheus server because it's very important to understand what kind of data uh, this uh, server can collect and process. For the purpose, I have drawn here uh, one graph with two axes. Vertically, I have, uh, <clears throat> I'm putting a floating point number. And horizontally, there is a millisecond precision timestamp. So let's put one uh, point here. This is a point, a given value, uh, collected at a given time. So uh, there is a special term in Prometheus uh, about this. This is a timestamp value. So Prometheus is able to collect and process only timestamp values, 
nothing else. We have no strings, no booleans, no trees, nothing. So it seems very simple, but it is not really that simple. I will put some more dots on this graph and connect them with a line. Now this starts to look like a function. A function which shows how a given value changes over time. For example, this might be the temperature outside right now. Uh, <clears throat> these functions belong to something uh, which is called metric in Prometheus. So every such function belongs to a metric, and the metric has uh, a given name. In this case, I named my function, uh, my metric, J prime metric. The points here are collected or are scraped in regular intervals. Uh, closed uh, in our case, in our setup, this is close to 15 seconds. And the interesting thing is uh, that this metric, J prime metric, may contain more than one function. So this one, which is uh, colored in green. In order to distinguish between these two, Prometheus is able to assign a unique set of key value pairs to each function. So uh, the red one is label 1, v, uh, v1, label 2, v2. And the green one is label 1, v1, label 3, v3. Please note that the first labels are the same, but the whole set of key value pairs is different. So something, a function, which is identified by its metric name and a unique key value uh, pair set is called time series. Again, function. Key value, uh, key value pairs, unique, and metric, this makes time series. So Prometheus is a time series database. And time series, uh, this database is able to process, to analyze time series. But also, we can derive new time series from these, which are already stored. For example, I can sum up these two functions, and I'll get a new time series. Uh, so enough. Theory, uh, maybe this, is, this may sound a little bit confusing at first. That's why I have uh, created a sample project in my GitHub account. Uh, if you feel curious, you can take a photo with uh, the link. Uh, and you can also ask questions there if something is not clear. So my project contains uh, three, uh, three things. First, a demo service, which is a simple Spring Boot uh, applic web application. It exposes and defines sample counters. Counters are time series that can only grow up uh, in time. For example, the numbers of errors in your error log. Gouges can go up and down, uh, like the memory usage. I have defined some APIs and the Prometheus endpoint where uh, these, all these things are exposed. There is a folder toolbox which contains several files inside it. Uh, I'm using them to dockerize all my infrastructure and to get up uh, everything up and running. And there is a documentation in which I desc describe how you can start this very easily. It's really very trivial, especially if you are working on Mac and on Windows. For, Lin for Linux, there is a small trick which should be applied. Now I want to show you the code of the service. And we will have a peek at the Prometheus console, write some prompt QL queries, uh, have a look at Grafana, and create this demo dashboard uh, which I have shown. So I will exit this one and go to my service. OK, uh, demo service is a very standard Spring Boot application. Nothing special here, no rocket science. Uh, I will start with uh, my Gradle file. This is. I have built a service with uh, my favorite build tool, which is not Maven. Uh, we, we are talking here about Spring Boot 2.0, and I just want to mention a few words about the dependencies. The first dependency is to Spring Boot Starter Web. That's because we have a web application. Next, uh, Spring Boot Starter Actuator. Why do we need Actuator? We need it because uh, these text files I have been talking about, they are exposed to the outside world via an actuator endpoint. But this is generally not visible to us, the developer, so I won't discuss anything. I won't say anything about Actuator anymore. And the third uh, dependency is the most interesting one. It is a dependency to Micrometer. What is Micrometer? Micrometer is compared to a simple Walk4j in the world of uh, metrics. Uh, in, other, in other words, uh, these are a set of interfaces and APIs that you can use to define counters, gouges, and so on. And it supports, uh, it has pluggable architecture, uh, but 
And if you use it, you can put different implementations which understand the language of the underlying uh, monitoring system. In this, case, in this case, Prometheus. The idea is that if you someday want to exchange Prometheus with something else like Graphite, for example, theoretically, it should be very easy, and we should just replace this dependency and do nothing, uh, not, nothing uh, more. So this looks like a uh, simple walk for j and walk back, like micrometer and Prometheus. And this is the way to describe, this is the recommended way to describe metrics in Spring Boot uh, applications. Uh, now, my classes, the demo counters classes. Again, very simple one. Uh, on these lines, I have used the micrometer API to define a count, two counters. Uh, they belong to the same metric with name demo service card bit to tau. The first is labeled with bit bit one, and the second one is labeled with bit and bit two. And they belong to the same matrix. And there is infinite loop in which I sleep for one second, and then I incre increment the first one with 0 0.5, and the second one it increments twice as fast in an infinite loop. So nothing special. Just again, I want to point your attention to the, uh, your attention to the import statements. There are dependency, dependencies only to micrometer, and this class is totally oblivious of the existence of uh, Prometheus. Uh, demo gouge, this is something similar, but the API is just uh, a little bit different. There is a gouge which uh, oscillates between uh, 0 and 10. And I have also created one very simple REST API here, API Wogger error and API Wogger warning, which uh, when I call this uh, on HTTP, uh, what, what it does is just to walk error or warning message. I will use them later on. So uh, now let's go on. Uh, let's move on. And this is uh, what, what we see here is the Prometheus back office. It is exposed, the UI is exposed here in the default Docker image on port uh, 1990. And this is the place where we, the developers, uh, will do our work. We have an expression uh, bar in which we write our prompt QL expressions. And when we press the execute button, we will see the result. So I will, currently uh, everything is running and my services is also running in the background, hopefully. Okay, so this is my first pro prompt QL query. It contains only the name of the metric. And uh, the result of this query, I, I told you it's a bit weird. Uh, the result of this query is something which is called instant vector. Instant vector, instant vectors are a set of time series with their values collected at the time when the query had been executed. So if I execute this query again, uh, we will see different results because in the meantime, Prometheus collected more data from my, uh, from my service. So this is a numeric view here in the console tab, but we also have a graph tab here, which is able to process uh, uh, results which return instant vectors. And for example, uh, I can see here how, uh, how my counters had been increased in the last 15 minutes. I can do some filtering here. There is option to show stacked graphs, but uh, in few words, you can imagine that every vertical line here is one uh, instant vector, which had been returned in a given moment of time. Okay, so next, next stop, uh, I already executed one query here, which is a valid Prometheus query. So now, now I want to go uh, into Grafana. This is the back office of Grafana. It's running on port 3000. The default uh, Docker image is secured with username admin and password admin. And your first job here, uh, when you enter the back office of Grafana, is to define data sources, or at least mine was. Yes. Uh, I have already defined one data source. This is the place where Grafana will pull its data from, its uh, monitoring data. And uh, I can add alternative data source. Uh, as you can see here, the name of the supported uh, systems, we, we see here Elasticsearch, Graphite, InfluxDB, OpenTSDB, whatever is that, I don't know. And as you can see, pretty much uh, tools. But uh, now I will, focus, uh, I will focus only on Prometheus. 
Uh, before that, maybe it will be useful to show you uh, the result of this endpoint which I have been talking about. So the service is running at port 8080, and there is an endpoint which is named Prometheus. It returns text file, just as I promised. And this text file uh, contains uh, multiple lines, and every line uh, is a single piece of information. Some of the lines start with uh, the number sign, these are commands, and they are ignored by Prometheus. And uh, here, on these lines, you can see our sample query, uh, sample counters, demo service called bit to tau with label bit one, bit bit one, and the other, the other time series, bit bit two. So every, li every line, which is not a command, is a time series. The format is the name of the metric, and in, within curly bra braces, all the set of key value pairs, followed by a white space and a number, a floating point number. So Prometheus calls this every five seconds, I think, on my installation and collects this data, collects the, the values and puts timestamp to them and stores it uh, in its local storage. So here is Grafana. I have already defined some data source. And now I will create a dashboard. So this happens with the post sign. And I will save the dashboard, the empty dashboard. Uh, J prime 2018. OK, we have an empty dashboard. It does nothing. It's not very beautiful. But uh, uh, what is worth mentioning about it is that it is uh, saved within Grafana in JSON format. So it's possible to export your dashboards in JSON files and even add them to your source tree, which is a good practice, in my opinion. The first thing that I want to add is this uh, graphing panel, which will show how the, my counters are uh, increasing. To do so, I press here the Add panel. And uh, then I'm adding a graph. So we see here an empty graph. Of course, there are no data points because I haven't configured it yet. And to do some configuration, I'm entering the edit mode of this component. Within the edit mode, uh, there are lots of tabs down there. And in each tab, you can do different uh, things. So uh, let me click here and there. I will name this demo counters graph. And in the metrics tab, there is a data source. I'll, I'll tell this panel that it will pull its data from Prometheus. And here I will write our PromQL query that we have written already. I'm interested just in the results in the last uh, 30 minutes. So we can see this uh, graph already. And there is a small legend down there which describes uh, which colors uh, belong to which metric. I can do some filtering here. But this legend uh, is not very good, so I will fix it a little bit and put my own text here. I can use the labels in curly braces, as we already see, as saw uh, with Kibana, I think, on the previous lectures. And I will save it to the dashboard, going back to the dashboard. And what, is, uh, what remained here is to say that uh, this dashboard should refresh every five seconds. So here is our first component. It refreshes every five seconds, and it brings data from Prometheus here. Prometheus uh, collects data from our Spring Boot uh, web application every five seconds here. Uh, now I want to add two more, uh, two more components here. They, these are the single stat components. The single stat components will show the current value of uh, our counters. So I'm editing again the edit mode. It's slightly different than the previous component, but I will write, write it like that, bit one. And I will go here, specify my data source, and write again my uh, prompt query, query. And uh, nothing will happen, because I have an error here. When I have an error, the component, uh, which is configured, shows this little uh, red triangle at the top corner. And when you hover your mouse above, above it, uh, the text of the error becomes visible. So it says that uh, I have uh, written prompt QL query, which returns multiple time series. But this component is a, just a single stat component and supports only a single, uh, a single time series. So I have to do some filtering here and 
filter out uh, these time series which are not needed. Here I can uh, write in my prompt queue queries uh, in curly braces. I can give some labels and filter by them. I want the instant value. And I want to play around in the options tab. Let's see what is here. I want to put some, uh, I want to show not the average uh, value of my counter, but the current value. I want some background, and I want that this uh, background is green when the value is less than 1,800. Uh, yellow between uh, 1,800 and 2,000, and red above uh, 2,000. So th that's it. I will save it right now and go back and do some for formatting. I have no mouse. Uh, so this is the bit one component. And now I will duplicate this component. This is a feature of Grafana. So I will copy everything which we have here uh, in a new component. I can do that by using the duplicate function. Here we are. And I'm putting here, I'm editing again this duplicated component. The only thing that I want to change is to change my query so that uh, it returns the value, the instant value of another component. Please note that this is already red because the value is above 2,000. Now I'm saving this back, and here are our two components. Now let's see how we can add a gouge. The gouge is again managed by a single stat component, but this time the configuration is very different. So we enter the edit panel. I will name this thing demo gouge. And within the metrics tab, there is a Prometheus data source. I will uh, write the query, which returns the value of the gouge. I want an instant uh, value. Here is the current state. But this time, uh, I'm going down there, drilling down, and there is a checkbox which says gouge. If I click it, we can see that the single stat component uh, turned into something more sexy, which resembles a real gouge. And I will put a min and max value to this gouge so that it looks even better. And now I will play again uh, with some colors and define thresholds, uh, which uh, specify what, what coloring uh, do I have. Here, these are green values, yellow values, red values. Uh, what else this component can do? I can go to the value mappings and specify some range to text uh, mappings. I, will, I want to get rid of this number in the middle and replace it with uh, some nice wordings. So between 0 and 2, I will write down low. Uh, between 2 and 8, it will read mid. And between 8 and 10, it will read high. Not like hello, just high, like high. OK, we have this good gouge right now. Uh, I will, uh, oops, it's not very convenient with. I'll move around the gouge. Uh, Grafana has some kind of uh, grid system that we can uh, use. Uh, OK. Uh, now what I want to add to finalize this uh, dashboard is that I want to experiment a little bit with this com text component. The text component is able to, to show text, static text. It's very easy to configure. It supports Markdown and HTML, so I will put uh, JPrime. 2018 here. And uh, within the options, I will write some HTML. Here is the HTML. Align, close to the center. And that's it. Demo service. OK, uh, I will save this and go back to the, to the dashboard. Uh, maybe I can scratch this a little bit. I missed my mouse. OK, so we have one dashboard quickly designed. This dashboard refreshes every five seconds and brings data from my service, which shows the value of the demo, uh, demo uh, gouge and the two counters and some graphing which show how my counters are increasing. 
Now I want, uh, we, I think we have time, I want to recap this once again and move to something more complicated. So we have created a Spring uh, Boot 2 ma uh, micro, uh, service, uh, which is uh, using Micrometer. We have a matrix endpoint, which exports this uh, text file. Prometheus collected this information. This is uh, the back office of Prometheus, where we can write some PromQL queries. And we can use them later on in Grafana. Now uh, I want to continue with uh, a little bit more of theory. So uh, Prometheus defines something which is called metric types. Metric types is something that means nothing to Prometheus, but it means uh, a lot to the client libraries that we are using. As I have said, counter, time series that can go uh, grow up. Gauge can grow up and down. Histogram is uh, histogram. It shows the distribution of a given value in a predefined set of buckets. And we also have a summary here. A summary is something similar to histogram, but uh, it defines uh, thick, thick, uh, quantiles, thick, thick quantiles. Uh, th there is lots of maths there. I don't want to drill down. Uh, instead, uh, there is uh, some very important question which uh, I can raise. And this is how can we model a histogram, for example, which is a quite complicated data type, with just a single time series in Prometheus? The answer is that we cannot do that, of course. That's why to model complicated data types in uh, Prometheus, like this histogram, we need several, we need several time series. In this case, uh, <clears throat> we can see here some uh, distribution bucket in this distribution buckets in this histogram. And they all belong to one metric with a given name, which is demo service distribution bucket. And they all have different labels. That's why they are different time series. It's not one time series. It's different time series belonging to the same metric. And the bucket, which is, uh, has value LE equals 1.0, this means less or equal to 1, collects all values which have uh, value less than 1. The other one, the Two collects all values which have uh, values less than two, and so on and so forth. The curious thing, the interesting thing uh, to mention here is that uh, histograms uh, in Prometheus are cumulative. This means that uh, every next bucket contains all the values uh, within the previous buckets. At the bottom here, we can see also some, uh, uh, some time series. Uh, this time, this time series uh, count the total number of uh, values which are tracked and distributed in these bu buckets, the sum of all these values, so the total sum, and the maximum value that we have uh, observed uh, ever in this histogram. So that's about metric types. And uh, last piece of theory, it's about the PromQL expression. Uh, PromQL expressions that we write into our developer backend, let's say, evaluate two uh, four things, to scalars, to string, to instant vectors, which I mentioned above, and to range vector. Let's, let's have a look at all of them. Uh, I will exit this right now and go back to the Prometheus uh, endpoint. And first, I will write here one string. Whoops. It's, I'm in the graphing tab. OK. So I'm writing one string. This evaluates uh, to string, currently unused in Prometheus. That's the most useless type so far. We can uh, write, this is also valid PromQL expression. We can write it, uh, something like that. We can sum to numbers. And they evaluate to scalar value, another kind of value. And uh, something we have uh, already talked about, some expressions that can be evaluated into the graphing console, they evaluate to instant vectors. All, these are all time series which are matching the uh, metric name and their current values, value of time. There is one more thing that we haven't mentioned so far. And uh, this is uh, the range vectors. These are the range vectors. So uh, a time range may be specified be behind the metric name. In this case, I'm using square brackets. So square brackets are the way to define this time range. And I have said that I want all the values within, this, uh, uh, within the matching metrics 
from the last one minute, from the whole last one minute. And if I execute that, I will see a slightly different result here. So again, we see two metrics with the different labels. But this time, we can see all the values which were collected uh, by Prometheus uh, in the last uh, one minute. I think they should be 12, because uh, it's uh, iterating the service every five seconds. Uh, OK. What can we use these uh, range vectors for? What, are their, what is their usage? Uh, we can use them in several functions which are defined uh, by the PromQL language. PromQL defines functions, just like some databases. And there is a documentation for, for these functions. So you can browse them and see what they do. In this case, I will give you an example with the increase function. The increase function, it's written here, it takes a range vector. It takes uh, a range vector and calculates the increase in time series in the range vector. What does it mean? I want, for example, to calculate uh, how much my counter had been increased in the last one minute. So I expect two, uh, two results here. Uh, 60, because one of the counters is increasing once per second. And the other one is 30, or almost 30, because I'm increasing with 0 0.5 per second. Let's try it. I will put here increase. Uh, so here we, uh, we see a result, which is an instant vector, and it matches my expectations. The values are 30 and 60. Uh, so this function increase again. Uh, it uh, received a range vector and calculated something which happened in that uh, range. In this case, this is the increase. Uh, OK. Now let's, let's do some, uh, let's show some more components. Let's uh, use some range vectors. I think we have time. And use some of the metrics that come out of the box. Walk, for example, this, uh, this metric, which is delivered to me by the Prometheus integration. It says walk back events to tau. And uh, every such metric has a label. Actually, this tracks how, mu how much uh, entries I have in the error log, how much entries I have in the warning log, info, and so on. So I will utilize this metric and use it in a table component here. In I will create a new dashboard because this is overcrowded already. And I will use the table component. So, so far, we have nothing here. Uh, I will monitor my log back right now. Put some metrics, which is the default Prometheus metrics. And I will sum the increase of this event in the last one hour or in the last 30 minutes. And I will organize them by the level. So so I see here a table, but it contains all the time series which are collected so far. So there are 10 pages of time series. That's why I will get an instant view. And I will uh, conclude that there, is, uh, there are no, no new errors in the last, uh, no new walk entries in the last 13 minutes. So uh, I will store that right now and save the dashboard and make it refresh every five seconds. And I will use now my logger REST API to send some messages to my error log. Let's, let's have a look how this looks like. So this is my very simple API, REST API. So it takes the message from the request parameter and writes it in the error log. I will write one message and echo it, echo it back. And I will write now another one, this time warning message. I will write it here, one, and so on. Uh, I see here one error message, but it doesn't look very nice, and one warning message. So I will fix that by going to the column styles. I will remove these uh, decimal points after the end. Uh, this happens some cryptic clicks. And here we are. 
So now we can see that uh, we already have some, uh, I can sort here, the table component uh, support sorting, and this survives refreshes of the dashboard. And I can see here that I have some uh, one warn warning message, this one that I sent via my API, and one error message here, just one error message. But I also have one info message, and the question is where did it come from? So I have to check. The answer is that I defined one alert which will notify me uh, when there is a new error uh, entry in my error log. So this alert works by sending a notification to uh, my custom endpoint, in this case, because this is very easy to implement. And I simply uh, echo it in the console of the application. So uh, if I exit this mode, uh, no, I didn't exit it. I can see the error log, and here at the bottom is a notification that my J prime alert had been received. So how does how are alerts received? Uh, how are alerts defined? They are defined in YAML files, and then they are uploaded in Prometheus. They can be also they can also refresh themselves and so on. Uh, when you go here and click on this alert, you will see its definition. So this alert is called demo service errors. And it fires when there are some new error uh, messages in my log. And uh, this, uh, my custom webhook will receive this, uh, this summary. Uh, in our company, we have integrated these alerts with HipChat, but uh, this is uh, very difficult to do for a demo. And let's, let's send one more error message. And see what will happen here. Nothing so far. Maybe I didn't uh, call the API. OK. So now, uh, as you can see, uh, Prometheus points out that uh, this, uh, this alert is already active. And uh, it will be active for the next uh, one minute. And I have co configured my alert manager to group all alerts, which came in the last uh, one minute uh, together and sent me just a single alert to my custom webhook. How does this happen? There are some uh, in the two box folder. There are some, uh, some files that you can have a look at. Here is first the definition of uh, the alert itself. So I have uploaded it by using some Docker tricks. I have uploaded it to my Dockerized Prometheus. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, <coughs> the configuration file of the alert manager. Uh, I have uh, here specified alerts also has, uh, have labels, just like uh, normal time series. So you can uh, create complicated rules and routes which uh, match the labels of the alert. And in this case, I have sent this alert to my, uh, to my custom endpoint, which works on host Docker internal 8080 API alert, J prime. And uh, this is finally locked here. So we can have a look at this again. Whenever I am getting the error message, here is a corresponding alert that uh, came, to my, came to me. And what else I can show? I think I have a little bit more time. We can also define a, a graph which uh, shows, let's try that, maybe we will have time. One graph which shows exactly when uh, the error message was retrieved. I'm writing sum of increase because in this way, uh, sometimes we can uh, survive uh, service restarts. So let me try that. So here, here we can see, uh, we can move to the last 30 minutes. 
And we can see exactly, uh, I have zoomed out this graph very much, and we can see at exactly what time, at which time the alert was uh, received. So it is good if you model something like this to, to place these dynamics panels next, next to the table. So whenever you are getting an er error, you will, have, uh, you will notice when this error occurred, and also the alert will be sent to you. So we have four minutes left, and do, maybe you have some questions, and we can finish this, okay? What happens if the Prometheus server goes down? How do you get the alerts? Uh, you don't get it, then. Hmm? Uh, we have to find. Usually, there is an indication on our dashboard that uh, Prometheus is uh, not available. But uh, in case that the infrastructure is down, you cannot do anything, actually. Uh, we are scaling, uh, scaling Prometheus in several instances so that it works not only uh, in, a, in a single instance which can fail, we, we can scale them into multiple instances so that it can be resilient to failure. But in general, if there is no Prometheus, you cannot get alerts, actually, because they cannot be evaluated. So in the use case that you've shown, you actually integrate Prometheus inside the implementation of the microservice. Yes. Uh, can you hook it in externally so that it gives warnings when, for instance, the service is down based on string? Yes. Uh, the, uh, when the, we have alerts when the service is down. Uh, there are some functions uh, in the PromQL language which evaluate when uh, some kind of metrics is missing. So we have... Uh, um, a time series which is called up by default that is emitted uh, from a service periodically. And we can write such a PromQL query which evaluates positively when this metric is missing. And can I hook it in in my Spring Boot log so that it triggers events based on the application log without touching the application itself? Yes, uh, with, uh, I have done that in the demo project. Uh, I'm using Spring uh, Boot 2.0 with micrometer implementation. And this library actually uh, contains a logback appender internally, which uh, counts the number of the errors. So I'm getting them out of the box. And I have done that without touching the code of, uh, uh, without touching the, code of the application. You can also get some metrics about the memory usage and so on. So you can use some of the things out of the box or by using some external library, of course. Uh, my question is about, uh, is it possible uh, to have uh, your uh, events coming in real time, not by polling them? You poll them in five seconds now in this demo. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, is it possible to have them in uh, real time? That means uh, some kind of reactive transformation that you can subscribe to. For example, using Reactor uh, or Webflux in Spring 5 or something? Uh, no, there is, I, I think no. Uh, there is something which is called uh, push gateway in which you can push uh, information from uh, which should be scraped normally. This, uh, but this is intended only for short-lived jobs. Prometheus uh, uses the pull, pull data mechanism. So it pulls data regularly and that is the way it works. Uh, this push gateway can be connected to Prometheus and from there to Grafana. Okay, so the flow is basically your app, push gateway, for example, and Prometheus Grafana, or some other tools that you like. No more question. 30 seconds left. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for attending my presentation. It was a pleasure for me. And goodbye.